commitments and selfless service to our great nation. We now ask all fans to please rise and remove your caps as our veterans in the crowd salute the flag. Presenting our nation's colors today, the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force Headquarters Group. Next, please welcome the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing Band as they present the Marine Corps Hymn. And now, please sing along and sing proudly as the third Maw Band presents the Star Spangled Banner. The 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing Band with our national anthem.
He wears Padre on the front of his shirt. He's a Padre now at home. A new father, Nick Hundley, comes back from paternity leave, goes two for four with a big home run in a San Diego win over the New York Mets last night. Today on a military Sunday, we get you ready for baseball. It's the fourth and final game of this series between the Mets and the Padres. The Padres today with a chance to end this series with a split. Great to have you with us alongside Mark Grant, the Hall of Famer, Tony Gwynn, and Mike Pomeranz. And once again for Dick Enberg, should be a great Sunday for baseball. It's going to be a tall challenge for the Padres. Have to beat the ace of the Mets staff, Matt Harvey. Yeah, and as a young guy, this guy's really been impressive. Power stuff, good curveball, composure. That's the thing that I like about him. Uh, he gone to the big city and pitched very well. He's a big game pitcher. You see the, the statistics, second in ERA, second in strikeout, second in whip, third in on, and opponent's batting average. He's the real deal. Now, his last start against the Dodgers, he wasn't as sharp as he usually is, but he's a four-pitch four pitch mix guy and is very impressive for a young pitcher. Tell you what, if Clayton Kershaw weren't in the National League, he'd be number one in virtually every category. Now, he's going to be opposed by Eric Stoltz. We know what Eric brings to the table. Very crafty left-hander, and he can shut down virtually any lineup. You just took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say crafty. I think Eric Stoltz is going to have to be crafty, and he can do that because he can off-speed him with the curveball, the changeup, but it's all about spotting the fastball as well. But do you think Eric Stoltz like pitching at home? In 11 starts, the record is 5-2. and two. Look at the ER Array. Almost two runs fewer here at Petco Park. And I think being crafty against some young hitters. Keep an eye on the young hitters in the Mets lineup. They're not used to seeing that type of stuff. Usually in the minor leagues, you see some power arms, guys on their way to the big leagues. Eric Stoltz has been around a while. He may soften them up quite a bit this afternoon for a good outing. Well, hopefully Eric will get some offense, much like the Padres displayed yesterday when they beat the Mets 8-2. to two. And one of the guys who continues to be red hot is Will Venable. Let's get more on him go down to the field with Kelly Kroll. Kelly? Thanks a lot, Mike. Well, certainly the Padres would like a repeat performance from Will Venable, who tied a career high with four hits last night, including a double and three runs. He's on a 14-game hitting streak, the longest active hitting streak in the majors right now. But this is what fired Buddy Black up last night about Will's performance. He's playing well on both sides of the ball. He's playing well uh, on the base paths. Uh, he's playing a complete game. I mean, even, even you know, there in the ninth inning, you know, his leads were aggressive. Right. And Torres, you know, multiple throws to first and, and, and Will, you know, still pushing it, right. diving back, playing hard. He's playing his ass off, which is great. Right. I love it. That is our Geico quote of the game. But, Mike, and you guys up in the booth, as you said, the task will be tall for Will Venable to continue that streak today. Matt Harvey, super good out there on the mound. Yeah, he's about as tough as they get in this National League, and it is just a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. We're so glad you're able to spend a little time with us. Once again, it's Mark Grant, the Hall of Famer, Tony Gwynn, and I'm Mike Pomeranz in for Dick Enberg today. Well, the Padres have had their hands full with New York. First game of the series, 4-1 to one in favor of the Mets. Second game, 5-2. to two. Mets took that one. But then last night, offense... Definitely perked up. Eight to two, and Nick Hundley, as we mentioned, a big home run. So influential in the outcome of the ball game last night, and also a great job by the Padres bullpen. There, Vincent Gregerson Street, all contributing, and that teases up to get you ready for this, the fourth and final game on a salute to the veterans on this military Sunday. So fortunate to be able to share their special day with you. You know, it's a treat for the men and women who are in the military to meet the Padres, but I'll tell you what, after talking to Logan Forsyth and Will Venable and Yonder Alonso, it's a treat for them as well to meet the people who have served our country. So we thank them, and the players do as well. They're very grateful. Padres in their camo uniforms, the most popular among the fans, and hopefully will inspire this team to victory today. Eric Stoltz, the lefty, making his 26th start of the season, 12th at home. And in those starts, the Padres are 8-3. and three. He has been very good as Eric, 5-2 and two here at home, 2-3-7 earned run average. And against the Mets, he is 3-1 and one with an ERA of 2 0 8. Well, let's check out the scouting report for the left-hander today. Early outs and keep them off balance. We mentioned that in our game open. He can spot the fastball, and there was a point in time, guys, where during the season, 
I, I swear Eric Stoltz could be blindfolded and he could hit that outside corner with that fastball and then finish him off with either a changeup or a curveball. But you certainly can't complain about the conditions and the hitters offense last night. They have gotten all they could hope for from Will Venable who comes into this with a 14 game hitting streak now for Terry Collins and the Mets today. Here's their starting lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Eric Young Jr. will lead off in left field. Now Justin Turner will start at second base. Daniel Murphy getting the day off. Marlon Byrd continues his hot hitting. He'll be in right field and hit third. Then Josh Satin. Wilbur Flores a rookie. Juan Ligaris a rookie. Travis Darno a rookie who just made his major league debut yesterday. Then Omar Quintanilla and Matt Harvey. Defensively for the Padres brought to you by the Aramco group behind Eric Stoltz. Logan Forsythe is going to make his fourth start of the season in left field and Will Venable is in center. Kristen Orfia in right. Chase Headley at third. Alexi Amarisa will be your shortstop. Jed Jerko, Yonder Alonso around the horn. Nick Hundley, new dad. He'll catch the lefty Eric Stoltz. Chase Headley back in the lineup after a day off. Buddy Black said just wanted to give him a rest. Let him get his thoughts together a bit. Yeah, take the day off and then face Matt Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chase can turn it around quickly too, right? Hey, you need your best. That's right. Against the best. So it'll be Young, Turner, and Bird against Stultz. And we are underway as Stultz behind Young now. Ball and no strikes. Young hitting 247 in 108 games. Remember, he came over from the Colorado Rockies. On June 18th. Number here's Headley. One down. This is the type of swings you hopefully see all day today. Yeah, the early in the count, little roller, 68 degrees today. Wind pretty quiet. We can call it partly cloudy, but I like the optimist view. Mostly sunny. Picturesque, very sunny. Gotta love it. Typical San Diego day. Mm -hmm. Here's Justin Turner. 276 hitter. On the disabled list for a little while. But since he's been back, hitting at 300, 12 for 40. But Terry Collins has a lineup that uh, is a little younger, I think, than he'd like to see. <laughs> Ball lifted to right center field. Denorfia Venable on the run. Long way to go. And it cannot be caught. So Turner's around second. He's motoring for third. Cutoff throw. Is into Alonzo and Justin Turner has a triple. That ball up in the air for a while, but in just the right spot for the Mets. Well, he stayed back nicely on that looping curveball from Eric Stoltz. Denorfia had a long run to try to track this ball down and it was just out of his reach. Shading him a little bit towards the line, and you see he just couldn't get out far enough to make the play on that one. Yeah, it looked like Tony Will Venable was playing on the shortstop side of yep. second base. So the outfield expecting him to pull the baseball. He takes that looping curveball, stays on it just enough to push it to right center field to, to beat the defense. Well, for Turner, that's his first triple of the season. It'll bring up Marlon Bird. 35 year old is 4 for 12 in the series. So a home run, three RBIs. Normally, when Stoll throws that big slow breaking ball like that, that's not a ball guys usually stay back and hit it to right, right center. Usually, they're pull, trying to pull that ball. Count even at a ball and a strike. Always have to be aware of the secondary lead of that runner at third base being Justin Turner. Even though there's a right handed hitter there. You throw a breaking ball down and in, a fastball in, you could put on a play with Chase Headley to where Nick Conley can throw down. 
Just put that in the back of your head. Always have to be aware of that as a runner. Ball hit very sharply. Fair inside the left field line. Turner will score easily on the trot. Bird pulls up at second base with an RBI double. But just like that, the Mets jump on Eric Stoltz. Trying to get in. Didn't get it in enough. And I talked about this for the last couple of days. Marlon Bird's body, when he sets his foot down, awfully quiet. Gave him to take that short stroke. Pulls it down the line for a double. Drives in the first run. Boy, Turner staying on the curveball, taking it the opposite way. And Bird spinning on that fastball nicely. Tough ball to keep fair, Tony. Yeah. And, and you know what? Veteran guys. Guys got a little bit of experience. Kind of understand what they need to do in order to you know, hit a guy like Stokes. So with an out and a run across, here's Josh Satin, 298 hitter. He's three for nine with an RBI in the series. 316 hitter in 27 starts for Terry Collins. That's eight for 20 with runners in scoring position in the series. Last night, three for eight. And as we enter action today, Mets and Padres right there, sandwiched in the middle in the National League. Runs scored about similar in offense overall. Mets come in in third place in their division, 18 games back. 56 wins on the year. Padres 55. An awkward swing there by Satin. And Stultz punches him out for the second out of the inning. You think Satin had uh, some type of off speed pitch in the back of his mind because Eric Stultz toying with Satin with the fastball to get it for the strikeout. Bad hack. Looked like one of those. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a called strike. But I'll yeah. try something. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good numbers we just saw right there from Eric Stultz. Wilmer Flores. Flores, one of those young players, is just ninth game in the big leagues. It's game number 10 for him, 281. You haven't been following the Mets. Flores, Satin, Turner, all guys trying to fill in around the infield, mostly because of the absence of David Wright. Right hamstring injury may be lost for the year. They're not saying so for sure, but it'll be a while for Terry Collins before he sees Wright back in the lineup. So it falls to guys like Flores today to get the start. This ball lifted to right field. Denorfia at the line makes the play. And that'll do it for the Mets in the first, but they pick up a run on two hits. Padres coming up.
by your San Diego County Lexus dealer, inviting you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. And by Farmers Insurance. Contact your local agent at 888-96-FARMERS. Mets picked up a run in the top of the first inning. Padres fans out at the park at the park enjoying a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. This is the fourth and final game of the series between the Mets and the Padres. Here's the Padres lineup brought to you today by our friends at Toyota. Will Venable will lead off with a 14 game hitting streak. Then Alexi Amarista gets the stop and the, the start rather once again at shortstop. Yonder Alonso will hit third and play first. Then Jet Jerko, Chase Headley back in the lineup after a day off. Kristen Norfia, Logan Forsythe, Nick Hundley, and Eric Stoltz. All facing the ace of the Mets staff, Matt Harvey. Harvey started the All Star game. One and one in two starts against the Padres. And Venable. First ball hunting. If it's fastball. You know what? You know what just struck me on that? You know, he wanted it away. It leaked up. Great turn on that one by Will. Keith Hernandez and Tony were talking the other day. And he got the advice from Luke Brock saying, you get that first pitch fastball, try to yank it. Try to pull it. Let's see if uh, that affects Harvey at all. And it goes away. You see, the reason why you do that is because Matt Harvey's all the way on the first base side of the rubber. And you're letting him know right, you know, right from the beginning, hey, if you're willing, you can try to bust me inside. I'm going to show you. I'm going to let it go. Left field, here's Eric Young Jr. One down. Well, here's the scouting report on young right hander Matt Harvey, the 24 year old. Bulldog mentality and avoid the strikeout. You know, he's known for the strikeout, wiping out the hitters. See if these Padre hitters are going to swing early in the fastball. If you get a, a breaking ball for a strike early in the count as well, take a hat at, hack at it. But on the fast track to the big leagues out of the University of North Carolina, Matt Harvey. Here's Alexi Amarista. Top three hitters in Buddy Black's lineup today, all left handed. Which, when you subscribe to conventional wisdom, would make sense against a right handed pitcher. But Harvey is holding left handed hitters to a 104 average. As you just watching him work, he's all the way over on the first base side of the rubber. You see that little line coming towards home plate. That's. That's where he wants his front foot to land when he when he's coming through with his delivery. See that big spot in the middle of that line right there. He wants to stay on that line and as a left handed hitter. Throws a little bit across his body. Most hard throwers do. Exactly. But to me the, the part that of the plate that he controls the most is the outside part not the inside. part. Yeah, see there's the whole rubber right there. And then he's all the way over to that first base side. So he isn't afraid to come in there, but a lot of times you have to ask yourself that question. Is he trying to throw a strike in or is he trying to make me conscious of the ball in? And that's him landing on that spot. Long stride for Harvey. Yeah. Too, as we take a look at that in slow motion. And again, what I like is usually he just cruises along about 94, 95, but gets guys in scoring position. He has the ability to turn it up a notch. Left field again. And again, Eric Young Jr. puts it away. Two down. You know, that's also an impressive nugget, Tony, about Matt Harvey is that fastball. 92, 93, but like you said, he can hump it up. He's been clocked at 99 mm -hmm. on that fastball. Again, especially with young pitchers, you're looking at a couple of things. Composure. Does he stay composed out there? Does he get rattled? And the other thing, does he pitch different with guys in scoring position? Now, you know, we'll hopefully find that out here at some point in this game. But, you know, right now he's just cruising along 93, 94, trying to locate the fastball, trying to establish it. It's the first breaking ball that he's thrown today. Yonder Alonso, three for nine in this series. Highest batting average on the Padres at 293 coming in. 
It'll be an interesting start here for Harvey too because if he's had any difficulty it was his last start yeah. against the Dodgers. Gave up four earned runs in six innings. Mets lost four to two. And as you guys point out as being a young pitcher you hope. Padres can jump on him early maybe rattle him a bit. See that last change up at 87. A little bit of movement. Hey now. Change your eye level. Yeah, 87 change up, 96 heater at the chin. Knee, change up, chin, fastball. Now what? I say double up with the fastball. There it was. How about it? Yonder Alonzo, right center down. Cut off at the track, but Yonder pulls it easily. A double for Yonder Alonzo. And while Yonder has been efficient with the singles, the extra base hits have been tougher to come by, and he gets one here. I'll let the Hall of Famer take this one. Fastball, middle of the plate, didn't get it in enough. Alonzo talked about being aggressive with the number one today. Got one. Lines it in the gap in the right center field. Marlon Bird again does a great job cutting that ball off and getting it back in. But run scoring opportunity here for the Padres. Jed Jerko. Hits that ball very well in left field, but Eric Young Jr., who'd been very busy here in the first inning, gloves the third out, and the Mets lead one to nothing. It's, it's been great. Um, you know, I think he understands, you know, the way pitchers think, um, you know, what's going on in the pitcher's mind. And so, you know, when he shows that he has confidence in you, in you every fifth day and, um, you know, there's been situations where I thought he may not leave me in this game. And he has. It's been great. I mean, that's that speaks a lot. I mean, as, as a pitcher, knowing that your manager has, you know, the confidence that you can, you know, get through this situation or finish this inning, you know, that helps. Eric Stoltz, of course, has had quite a ride throughout his career, and that was an interview I got to do with him just a week ago. It aired on Padres Weekly, and I have to thank Eric for doing that. It was so interesting, guys, to hear him talk about his career, of course, with four different teams and has also spent time in Japan but loves landing here in San Diego where he gets to work with a manager like Buddy Black. Those two have quite a great relationship. Well, Stoltz is a case study in perseverance, no doubt. Ligaris, Darno, and Quintanilla. To face Eric here in the top of the second inning. Mets lead 1 0. You know, usually when a player goes over to Japan, it's the last hurrah. Not too many guys go to Japan and then come back, but you have to admire Eric Stoltz for still chasing the dream, have that fire in his belly. Isn't it especially, what's the old joke? Hey, you're left handed, you got a pulse, you got a chance. <laughs> right? Well, he understands pitching. Yes. It's come a long way. It's been fun to watch. 
Good athlete, too. He'll be tested. Stoltz. And Alonzo off the bag. We have seen this a couple of times recently. I'm not sure why he came off the bag. I think maybe he thought the throw was. He's going to have to make a tag, maybe. But no reason for him to come off the bag there. Stoltz was on it. Stoltz had a good throwing lane. He's over by the mound. And his left foot should be anchored on the bag. One of the feet should be anchored on the bag. And I don't know that he ever started on the bag. I don't think he was on the bag. But I don't know why he thought the bag was behind him. Yeah. Behind him. He, he reached behind him. It's got to be an error, right? It is. It's got it's, to be. It is. It scored an error. Alonzo picks up his third error of the season. And Ligaris is aboard. So, yeah, it's a head scratcher. Travis Darno made his major league debut yesterday. Went 0 for 2, couple of walks, became the sixth Met to make his big league debut this season. Wilmer Flores, Zach Wheeler, Gonzalez Hermen, Lagares, and reliever Scott Rice, the others. Yeah, Maurice did himself. And so the error is erased. And a double play by Alexi Amarista. You talk about a pitcher trying to erase that play at first base. You've got to just erase it from the hard drive, try to make a good quality pitch. You get that ground ball and you take your chances that way because that's frustrating. That's a play that should have been made. Yeah. Right? I, I'll tell you the other thing, too, is that. You know, that ball was hit. Stoltz started out like he was going to try to field yep. it and realize, hey, this could be a double play ball. Pulled his hands back. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, Amarisa gets his steps on the bag, turns it over. And now we're kind of, you can go, okay, we're back two outs. Omar Quintanilla. Quintanilla, two for 11 this series. 0 for 3 yesterday, 224. In 68 games this season. Now if you've watched the Mets early on, Ruben Tejada was the shortstop. He had some offensive troubles. He got sent down to the minor leagues. And Quintana has been picking up the slack for Terry Collins. There's a roller to Alonzo and steps authoritatively on the first base bag to retire Quintana. Mets lead 1 0. Padres last half inning. Yonder Alonso 
unable to find first base, so no harm, no foul. Mets couldn't score, but there you see Yonder in the dugout explaining things to his teammates, including the pitcher Eric Stoltz. You know, as I mentioned, in the end, no damages. Travis yeah. Darno bounced the ball to uh, Alexi Amarisu, who turned a double play and erased the error. But tough, just the same to well, explain even, that. Even Yonder scratching his head, shaking his head. He's beside himself because he. I mean, but he did he think he was side standing next to the bag and that he could, you know, just catch it and step on the bag? Because he stepped backwards. All right, he met still lead, one nothing. Further damage averted. And I know people at home are wondering, you know, why you guys complaining like that. It's because he's a first baseman. Ground ball, the first job yeah. a first baseman has on a ground ball. Go to the bag. Go to the bag. Lesson learned. <laughs> Here's Chase Headley, Chris Denorfi, Logan Forsythe to face Matt Harvey. Now Chase had the day yesterday given to him by Buddy Black just to maybe right his ship a bit mentally, Tony. Comes in hitting 236, two for eight in this series. 326 hitter, though, against the Mets in his career. And Harvey punches out Headley to begin the bottom of the second inning. Our Saquon Casino Daycation stat of the game. Major League strikeout leaders. Major League leaders. There's Matt Harvey at 181 right there at number four. Now Matt Harvey only has thrown 165 and two-thirds innings. I say only because you saw Clayton Kershaw on that list. Clayton, 190 innings. So fewer innings thrown. Nearly as many strikeouts. That's what a good fastball in will do. Snap it right in half. Mm. And that, um, oh, that poor bat. A little trade mark. Yeah. <laughs> and again, that's kind of hard to do for a right hander on the first base side of the rubber is get a ball in enough to break a right handed hitter's bat. Well, Denorfi has had himself a nice series. Six for 13. Four straight multi hit games for Chris. For him, that's a new career high. He just looks comfortable. Sushi, anyone? A little. Oh, yeah. Two balls, two strikes to Dino. There's the sushi. Mm. That's great. That's awesome. And down goes Denorfia. Second consecutive strikeout for Harvey, second of the game. The Mets defense behind Harvey brought to you by Hyundai today. Eric Young Jr. in left field. Juan Ligaris is a center fielder. Marlon Byrd over in right and around the horn. It's Flores, Quintanilla, Turner, and Satin. Travis Darno, the rookie catcher. He's catching the ace of the staff today. Well, we've seen all the pitches from Matt Harvey. We've seen the fastball is getting up to 97. We've seen that slider, the curveball, and the changeup from the young right hander. Logan Forsythe, two for five this series. See, Matt Harvey's got a little uh, blood on the side of his left. Oh, yeah. You see, it's on his, um, this is more about before the game. You see the blood on his left shoulder there. Maybe he cut himself shaving or something. Or it's red Gatorade. Doesn't seem to be affecting this stuff. No. I wonder if he's friends with Kurt Schilling. <laughs> yeah, the bloody sock. 
There you go. Wow. That explains it. The camera crew is on, on top of it. Everything. Harvey strikes out the side at the bottom of the second. Headley, DeNorfia, Forsyth go down. Mets lead 1-0. Time for us, San Diego fans of the game. Oh, very cute. Cuteness at the ballpark today. Great seats. We're in the military t shirt. And we thank that gentleman for serving our country and all the men and women who do so on this military Sunday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Matt Harvey to face Eric Stoltz. 149 hitter in his career. He's going to have to come become a better hitter <laughs> to compare himself with, you know, some of the other young Doc could swing the bat. Tom Seaver could swing the bat. You know, some of those young phenoms with the Mets could handle their business. Yeah, it's probably a little early to assess I mean, fairly, but fun. No, we talk about him on the on the pitching end, throwing 95. You know, mm -hmm. hey, got. Be able to hold your own on the offensive end too. Well, as you say, there's probably some room to improve offensively as Harvey goes down on strikes, and we check out those comparisons. First 34 games of their careers: Seaver, Gooden, Harvey. Pretty similar numbers wow. there. That's unbelievable. On his batting average, 197. Wow. And Doc, when he broke in, I mean, he was 19, but his stuff was explosive. Overhand curveball, straight change up, you know, 96, 97 with the fastball. I don't think I've ever seen a, a more explosive power curveball no. than Dwight Goods when he was on. Yeah. And it broke. It was a big oh. breaker. It 12 broke. to 6 yeah, or nose was, to toes. It was big. Tony, I'm sure in your career there have been guys who've had a lot of hype going in to face him for your first time to see him, and then there are other guys who, who maybe live up to the billing. As Eric Young Jr. bounces to Chase Headley. Yeah, I'll be honest. It was, uh, you know, obviously when you're a young pitcher in New York, you're going to get more hype than you get anywhere else in baseball. And, you know, you hear the hype. And, yeah, you know, I'll be honest. I thought, you know, Doc Good and other, I will see. He'll, you know, they say 97 is probably, you know, 92, 93. They say big breaking ball. It's probably not that big. And he came into Qualcomm, and the first pitch was like 96. And, you know, you'd straighten you up and just like, wow, yeah. step out. This is this is the real deal. And to be honest, again, I, I kind of thought the same thing with Matt Harvey. I mean, because like, you didn't hear a whole lot of buzz about him. And, you know, talking to Keith Hernandez again, 
today he kind of gave us some insight because originally they thought he was a number three type starter. But once he got out there and he started pitching, they realized, hey, you know, this guy's a number one. Hey, gentlemen, I have some breaking news for you. Dodgers lost today. How about that for a rarity. That's got to stop. Somebody, somebody's going to get fired. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say. <laughs> well, they were 48 3 now, their last 51 games? They're 5,002. I mean, they, yeah, they've just been playing out of their minds. But the Phillies stopped them today. 3 to 2 is the final in Philadelphia. And Eric Stoltz strikes out Justin Turner to end the third. Coming up, the new dad who delivered his first game back from paternity leave, Nick Hundley, in the third. We'll be the back. stepping up to the plate for the Padres and it is time now for our AT&T Twitter poll question of the day. I think you guys are going to like this one with Matt Harvey on the mound today. We want to know who is the best young pitcher in the game under the age of 25. You can vote on Twitter by using the following hashtags that you see there. Hashtag Harvey Young, hashtag Fernandez Young, hashtag Hashtag Baumgartner Young, hashtag Corbin Young, or Sale Young. That's a mouthful, guys, but a number of talented arms up there on the list. Who would you put as your best young pitcher under 25 right now? Ooh, boy, I really like the Fernandez kid from Miami. As Nick Hudley continues hitting the ball well. Lead off single here against Harvey in the third. You know how I look in that group? Madison Baumgartner because... He has proven it's such a young big game pitcher. Big game, sure. Postseason, World Series. And you know what? There's an argument for each one of those youngsters up there. Yeah. But I, if I had to choose one, Bumgarner has proven pressure situation, pressure game. And he's, he's, only, uh, he's come forward. He's the only one that's pitched in big games, postseason games. Tony, do you have a... I, I, I've seen Fernandez throw. He's impressive with Miami. I've seen Corbin throw a couple of times. I've seen Chris Sale throw a couple of times. But I agree with you. I think Baumgartner probably right now just because he's got a little bit more experience. Oh, uh, thought Stutz, he might have beaten things there. Is he going to get him? And they do at second base. Boy, Wilmer Flores was crashing hard at third base and. Eric Stoltz put the bat on the ball really well, but he went to shortstop with it. And Quintanilla is able to get Hundley at second. Just a little bit off. You see Quintanilla had to hustle just to get Hundley at second base. 
A good aggressive slide into the bag. Pop up slide by Nick Hundley. That was close. It was. Boy, if he could have angled that toward Flores, Stultz, he'd have knocked him down. Here's Will Venable. Well, I think that's why you know, Buddy put a lot of faith in. Hundley would have stuck that leg out there first. He might have had a chance to yeah. beat it instead of coming, coming around to the bag. Yeah, he even had a ball and a strike to Venable. Bill flied out to left in the first. He's got a 14 game hitting streak, the longest active streak in the big league. Wow. Three straight changes. Great arm action. Nothing changes between the fastball and the changeup. Get it up, get through it. Two seam action. You could see it from behind. I don't think you can see it from in front where Will is. So now you're 2 2 in the box, Tony. How do you approach this if you're Will? I got this guy throws too hard, so I got to honor the fastball and hopefully try to adjust on something else. And I think that's that last pitch tells you that Will's seeing the ball really good because three straight change ups and then breaking the ball down and in. Back with another change up. So you see Harden's out there pitching. He's not just out there trucking it at 96, 97. Well, Will is the team leader in home runs with 16. And you gotta figure Harvey's mindful of that. And he goes off speed again. And this time, Venable bites. And he gets him on the strikeout. Went back to the changeup. Down and away. The movement got him. And once again, Matt Harvey is not a thrower. Yeah, he can throw 97, 98, but he's a pitcher. He knows how to change speeds and hit his spots. That was a well located yeah. changeup. With movement going away on the outer part of the plate. There's the heater to Amarista. He also flied out to left field in the first. Two for eight now in the series is Alexi. Talk about pitch selection from Matt Harvard. We talked about the heater, but hey. Change up secondary pitch. He likes to go to that change up. He proved it to Will Venable even deep in the count. Occasionally that slider is just going to be a look see pitch. And the curveball to soften him up a little bit. That was a good fastball in. That was a real good fastball. 2 and 0. You know he's gearing up for the fastball and he came fastball in and got it, you know, got it in on Amarista. Setting up right under his knuckles, and that's where he put it. Looks like he's coming in there again. Well, Lexi had a good rip at it. A little, a little late. See, now here's where I would think Cambio. Fastball, fastball. Doubled up on the fastball lane. Just a guess. Saying here, I don't think you can beat me. I'm coming under your knuckles. And Could see it in his glove. And number of Flores. Gonna have to really hurry, but can't get the speedy Amarista. And Alexi wins a little battle there. Gets the changeup. Rolls it over to third base. Which is exactly what he wanted him to do. He was out in front. He's doing a good changeup moving away. He's out in front. He cues it down the line. Flores makes a nice play, but Amarista beats it out. So another opportunity for the Padres with a runner in scoring position. 
First and second now for Yonder Alonzo. Yonder doubled in the first. First of three Padres hit so far. You know, even though Alonzo doubled to the right center field gap, you look at the outfield here. Ligaris is playing on the shortstop side of second base. See him fastballs Alonzo sees in this at bat. You know, last year, Yonder Alonzo, when Harvey was a rookie, made a pay. And Yonder still hit very well for average, a little less power than we saw from Yonder last year. But base hit here would do necessary damage. But this one has lifted the center field. Ligaris is under it. And Alonzo is out and any Padres threat in the third Mets lead one to nothing. Real friendly, real close. And by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. Air and Space Museum, Balboa Park on this military Sunday. Chance all of us get to say thank you to the men and women who serve this country on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. You know, I never get tired of looking at that statue out there by our set, Tony Gwynn, the, the Hall of Famer. You know, interesting fashion statement. This, this is a, this is always amazing to me. You know what the trend is these days? Because I have a 19-year-old son. The white socks with the Vans. Make a comeback. Not a fan. No. <laughs> he hates flip-flops. I mean, look at the, this guy here. Cha-Cha here's got it. I, I love the hats, protecting the lid from the UVs. But you know what? Got to be honest. Not a fan. The white socks and the Vans. Mm -mm. How about that? Boat shoes. Yeah, big fan. No socks. Boat shoes. Love it. That's San Diego. Hey, not for nothing. Pretty sure guys like us, we're not the demographic for that look anyway. Yeah, you're right. We're getting old, but I'm a big flip flop guy. No, Tony, you're not. No. Pomerantz? Same. Flip flop guy. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm a coach, so I see my guys wearing like shower shoes, what we would consider shower shoes and white socks. <laughs> Here's a look. Marlon Bird. Two for two now. Guy's unbelievable, isn't he? Set up is is tailor made for him to square the ball up. He's just real slow in his in his setup. He gets his foot down, and then it's just about swinging the knob, and the barrel comes right behind it, and staying short, putting the ball in play. Well, this is quite a year for Bird. 
He's 10th in the National League in home runs, too. So the average is above 285. Here's Josh Satin, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Three for ten in the series. Stultz has struck out three already today. You know, after Marlon Bird, I was in the concourse today and I heard a couple of fans <laughs> they're looking at the at the program and it almost was like a scene from Major League. And one guy says to the other, Who who are these guys? You know, <laughs> looking at the Mets lineup. Really? And it was you know, Marlon Bird and I guess Eric Young Jr. If you follow closely, and after that, it's huh? Who? I don't think it's like that now. Wait till September when the rosters expand. And some of these guys you know, just, you get a chance to you know audition for this Mets team. So. Well, you get to see a bunch and evaluate for the upcoming season. There goes Bird, sat swinging. Tony Gwynn's 5.5 hole. Bird around second, doesn't stop, and the bobble might have made it anyway. Yeah, he was going to make it anyway. So back to back singles. Mets have runners at first and third. Really hard, just in the right spot. Bird was coming around second base. He was going to get to third because he was running on the pitch. You see him first side bottle the ball, but it really wasn't going to matter. Yeah, for a pitcher who throws the ground ball, you put that runner in motion, try to stay out of the double play. Eric Stoltz is around the plate. It's a good formula. Mm -hmm. Wilbur Flores. Flores to right field. Denorfia behind it. Good strong throw in, not in time. And Bird scores the Mets' second run of the ball game. So Flores delivers a sacrifice fly, and the Mets lead two to nothing. Demorphia catches it with his momentum coming forward. Two hot throw, just not enough. To get the speedy bird coming down the third base line. I think yep. that ball may have sailed on him a little bit because Denorby kind of caught that ball. Did he catch that ball kind of up in the air a little bit? Yeah. He did have his momentum, but I maybe sometimes I, Tony, you know better than anybody, as they appeal at third base. He did tag. Sometimes outfielders get a little anxious, maybe, mm -hmm. and see he just didn't get behind it right. enough. Right. You know, he was probably one step short. If he had gone one step back further, he, he would have timed it a little bit better. Maybe that two hop throw becomes a one hop throw. And that's something you took pride in, didn't it? Yeah. Working on your outfield play. I had to because I was horrible. <laughs> you know, when you first come up, you realize certain things you're good at. Well, defense, I oh, I was You really horrible. thought you were horrible. I was. I was. I had no arm. I couldn't get the ball to carry. This is how bad it was. Uh. When I went to my first spring training, Tommy House was you know, one of the coaches. And Dick Williams told Tommy House to take me out on field two and show me how to throw a baseball. And he said, Tony, how do you hold your baseball? And I grabbed it, a two seamer with the seam. Uh, <laughs> with the seam. Oh, nice play by Stoltz. And, uh -oh. oh, should be an easy double play. It takes a little work. And it does happen. The line drive off the bat of Lagarde, snared by Stoltz. And the looping toss to Yonder. Get up there. And he finds the bag. Let's leave 2 0.
Sooners Insider. Each week, Laura McKeeman is going to be talking with Coach McCoy on his thoughts on the road ahead. Plus, the crew breaks down the X's and O's. Chargers Insider premieres August 28th on Fox Sports San Diego. The voice of the Chargers was right there on that promo, Josh Lewin. And on the baseball side, he does Mets radio for the Metropolitans. A busy man. He is. Yeah. Got some air miles to get here, dude. <laughs> Doesn't get to use him with his schedule. Well, he's going <laughs> to do a Charger game. It's only worth it if you get a vacation now and again. Jed Jerko, Chase Headley, and Chris Denorfi against Matt Harvey here at the bottom of the fourth. Jed's numbers last seven games hitting 385. That ball is hit nicely and sharp, but Eric Young puts it away. A little too much top spin, maybe? Yeah, he he laid out the left the first time. Yeah, those are good at bats. He's taking good swings, hit the ball solid. Let's see if this ball gets in on just a little bit. Just a hair. Mm -hmm. But that's still a short stroke. That's right. Here's Chase. Harvey quickly ahead. No balls, one strike. It'd be interesting to watch the way the Mets, the Mets rather, handle Matt Harvey going forward as they keep a soft eye on those yep. innings limits. For him and Wheeler. Harvey comes in with 165 and two thirds innings thrown. I think everybody in baseball is very careful about how they phrase this mm -hmm. after what happened last year with your former player, Steven Strasburg, yeah. in Washington. They don't even want to say the word. Well, in 2011, he pitched 136 innings. That was in two stops. St. Lucie, Avon, and Binghamton, double A. Now Harvey was quoted as saying he'd like to try to throw 200 innings if for no other reason psychologically to tell himself all right I've done it I can do it but you know, he's got the good heater tops in that category averaging 96 wow. and for the second time today he gets Chase Headley on strikes that's the fifth strikeout for Matt Harvey. That's a breaking ball. That's his fourth pitch on the list, percentage-wise. Doesn't throw it all that often, but there he puts it in a good spot. Here's Kristen Orphia. Again, did you see how Darno caught it? Just like he did it on that last pitch as well. Hey, he catches the ball softly, but that hand of his and that glove is like a rock. Stay still. Gotta love that as a pitcher. Oh. I mean, even if he doesn't get you a lot of pitches, he gets you a lot of consideration. Yeah, right? That's sure. what you want. His job's to help you. Help you as a pitcher. And if he can hold that target firm and give the umpire a really good look at it. Bouncing ball to Quintanilla. And the Padres go in order in the fourth. The Mets hold a 2 0 advantage.
of Famer Tony Gwynn, Mike Pomeranz in for Dick Enberg today. Mets lead 2 0. Mets lead the series two games to one. This is the fourth and final game of the set. Before the Padres welcome the Pirates into town for three. Beginning tomorrow. And then a day off, and then the Cubbies come in. The longest homestand of the season for San Diego. Ten games, 11 days. Chance for a series split today, but it's going to be a tall order. And Eric Stoltz doing what he can to keep the Padres in this one against the Mets ace, Matt Harvey. It'll be Darno, Quintanilla, and Harvey to face Stoltz here in the fifth. Sixty three miles an hour. Ephus curveball. I love that pitch. Love it when he gets it out on it, certainly, but because it, it proves the courage of his convictions. And then, then, look at Darno's late on the eighty six mile an hour fastball, right? Darno hit into a double play his only time up today in the second. Made his major league debut yesterday. John Buck, the Mets regular catcher on paternity leave. Yes, he did. Nanu says Dan Iasonia down at first, so it's three balls, one strike. Couple of very good control pitchers going at it today in Harvey and Stultz. Both issue fewer than two walks per nine innings. And there's the first free pass of the day issued. It's Dorno's third walk. In his very short big league career. He only has six plate appearances. They're looking for his first big league hit. Don't let it come tomorrow. Yeah, I was just going to yeah, say. He could tell Derek Stoltz was not happy with that 3 2 pitch. As he came out of his hand, he was really upset with himself. Omar Quintanilla, he's 0 for 1. Two for 12 in the series. Thirty one years old. Yeah, don't hit run with Keaton Diaz as, as well. Probably not with a lefty on the mound though. Keaton Diaz looking to hook a ball in the hole between first and second. O2 count. Certainly affects thoughts there. No, I like the way Eric lifts that leg, kind of stares at the runner before committing to the plate. You can see Darno over there at first going to freeze up a bit, just a little uncertain. If he had a thought, he's coming back over to first. I've always thought when a pitcher lifts his leg, he's already committed in his mind what he's going to do. He might hold it to show the runner, but that'd be tough to do, I think. What did you do, left-hander? Nothing well. Could you do it? <laughs> As Quintanilla goes down on strikes. You know, I tried it. Uh, it is difficult. I would bring the leg up slowly to kind of linger and give myself just a split second to see if I noticed anything quirky in the runner, and then I'd have to commit. But it's not easy to do, yeah. and I don't know a lot of guys who could do it very well. I'm sure there have been several. But guys who do it as well as I did end up in a booth wearing makeup for a living. <laughs> Here's Matt Harvey. Lays down a nice butt. Alonzo will go to first base. And Jed Jerko there. Two down. Tony, who was the best uh, left handed move that you uh, played against? Can you remember? Left handed. Oh. Uh, I don't Cubs. mean to put you on the spot. Pitch with the, it was a left hander. Pitch with the Cubs. Pitch with the Phillies. Gosh, what was his name? I'm thinking. Pitched with a bunch of teams in the National League. He had the greatest move. It'll come to me. All right. 
Got the afternoon. Beautiful day. Okay. Eric Young Jr. Not Jimmy Key in the American League always had a good move yeah. too. Former Clemson Tiger. Yeah. My alma mater, yeah. We uh we looked at his move, I remember at school, and he again its physical skill set made it so difficult to emulate that as a young pitcher. He just had the knack. As Bender, Young swings through it. Jerry Mulholland. Remember him? Sure, I played with him in the Giants well, chain. I've seen him pick guys off. He had the good snap throw, yeah, too. And he did. He could do it both ways. He had a step off. He had the hang move where he could hang. You know, Mark, I've heard you talk about, too, in the instructionals. You, you want to certainly got to hold everybody close and have them respect as the opposition respect your ability to keep that running game in check but you can't become so preoccupied especially as a young pitcher that you don't focus on the pitch I think the main focus should be on the pitch you want to get the most out of your delivery and that's why you have to work on the slide step you have to work on obviously your regular kick but when there's a running threat on for like a Vince Coleman who I would pitch against yeah that, that was in the back of my mind but my main objective should be trying to concentrate on making a good quality pitch where the catcher's got the glove well, Vince Cullen, that might be an exception because he's going to steal on anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's been guys like Greg Maddox. He really didn't care. Right. You get on base. His objective was. Ahead. Let's try to steal. Go ahead. I'm trying to get the hitter. Mark Sweeney chiming in, texted me. He said, how about Ed Vosberg? Uh, Ed Vosberg, yeah, he did. He had a good move. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here. Top of the fifth inning. Stoltz now at 65 pitches. But every run has to be protected if you're the Padres because Matt Harvey doesn't need a lot. So ball four, Eric Young, second walk of the inning, second walk of the game issued by Eric Stoltz. The sports and highlight show you've been waiting for is here, folks. Fox Sports Live as Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole are joined by Donovan McNabb, Gary Payton, Andy Roddick, and Carissa Thompson to bring you everything you need to know about the world of sports. Fox Sports Live airs nightly on Fox Sports 1. So Eric Young Jr. battles back down 0-2 and works a walk from Stultz. It'll bring up Justin Turner. Turner, one for two, a triple score to run. That back in the first, then he struck out in the third. Turner, just another one of those guys for Terry Collins. Looking to fill some gaps. Marlon Bird, 35 year old veteran. He has been the one constant for Terry Collins at right field this season. Travis Dardo and Eric Young Jr. aboard. You can get out of this inning without having to face him. Much rather face him with nobody on and nobody out than ducks on the pond. Yeah, Bird already two for two. RBI and a run scored. No balls, two strikes. Same count he had on Eric Young Jr., batter previous. Let's get a better result here. Mark, you like to work quickly? Yes, I did. Because my philosophy was if I was going to do well or get my, you know what, handed to me, it had to happen quickly. <laughs> yeah, as my career went on, I wanted to work quickly. I wanted my defense. I didn't want to have, I didn't want to have Tony Gwynn airing me out in the dugout saying, come on, let's go. Even with runners on base? Even with runners on base, yes. I wasn't one of these guys just lollygagging around the mound. I used to get that rock and just get back, just put the 
foot on the rubber and start to go to work. Two balls, two strikes now. And full. Like any of us would ever have told you to pick up the plate. Gary Templeton would have. Yeah, Tiffany would have. I agree there. All right, second hitter in a row now for Stoltz, where he got 0 2 and then slipped to 3 2. I'm going fastball away right here if I'm a pitcher in this situation. Tony, what are you looking? I'm going to fastball in. There go the runners. Lifted to left. Logan Forsythe drifting, drifting to the track. And puts it away. As we head to the bottom of the fifth, the Mets lead two to nothing. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, we'll face Logan Forsythe, Nick Hundley, and the pitcher slot, Eric Stoltz. Well, we talked about the pitch selection for Matt Harvey, right? And the number one and two pitches that he used most frequently: the fastball on the left, the changeup on the right. Look at the look at the mechanics. Mechanics are almost identical, right? But the main thing is the arm speed. Now, Logan Forsythe on the left. That's a fastball, right? He can't watch. He won't be able to catch up to it. And then watch on the right on the changeup. Will Venable way out in front of the changeup. Boy, both hitters, Tony, they see fastball. They see arm slot fastball. Logan Forsythe couldn't catch up with the heat. Mac, uh, Will Venable on the right saw the tilt down and away with the changeup. Look at fastball, but he got the changeup. Could stay back on it. That's why a guy like Harvey is so tough. Good arm action. Gives you that same delivery every time. Now Logan seems to be okay and Padres have a base runner here to open up the bottom of the fifth inning. That was a first pitch curveball wasn't it? In football they talk about hitting you in the numbers. And Harvey. Like he found Logan Forsythe's 11 on his back. Here's Nick Hundley. Single into third. Let's see if he can get some of that power to transfer from last time. He had the two run home run. Padres could use a little something here. They tried to sneak a heater. I hung the first time and hung lined it in the left field for a base hit. Off speed, head 0 2. You know, we saw the change up to Will Venable, right? And that little clip he showed you. Not afraid to throw it to the right hands, right handers as well. Righty, lefty hitter doesn't matter for Matt Harvey. 
looked like me. He remembered that base hit on the fastball, so. Probably not going to throw him a fastball here. Uh, we all know the value right of the first pitch strike. It certainly opens things up, and you go 0 2. But you don't have to throw a strike, right? Anything you want in the tackle box. Mets will go to Minnesota for a series after they leave San Diego. Just one game. Makeup game for the Mets. That's a hang with them. That's a big hang with them. <laughs> Ball may fall. Running effort by Turner can't get to it. So Nick Hundley has his second hit today. Adjusted turn. Running as hard as he could out in the shallow right field. And Nick rubs the rabbit's foot. Has himself a base hit. See that that that, that ball right there it makes it's tough for Forsythe, the base runner, because Turner looks like he's got a chance to make a play. Where he, you know, if it's a little bit further out there, Forsyth can go all the way from first to third. But see, Turner looked like he was going to be able to make the play there. Comes up a little short, and now he can only advance one base. Big opportunity here for the Padres. They've got the first two hitters aboard. Forsyth at second. Hudley now at first. Eric Stoltz will square. Hey guys, that last hit considered a Texas leaguer, maybe? Remember, we got the baseball lingo show tomorrow. Be sure to tune in. Baseball vernacular coming at you. Nice talk to you. Is your mic on? Here's Harvey fielding the bunt. His only play will be the first. So Eric Stoltz does the job. Moves the runners over. Now watch the greening. Eric Stoltz will get in the dugout. Tony, you mentioned it yesterday, getting that runner over. Yes. That's when you go down to the end of the dugout and you greet your pitcher. You give him a high five. You give him knuckles. Nicely done, Eric Stoltz. Might not seem like a big deal, but when it doesn't happen, it's even a bigger deal, yep. right? Well, now this sets the table for the big guy, right? The hottest hitter in the Padres lineup, Will Venable, working a 14 game hitting streak. 0 for 2 so far today. This is the time to make something happen. Just doing real everything. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's mixing it up. He's just not going to give in and just lay a fastball in there. He struck him out the last time on a straight change. And he starts him out here with the breaking ball, which is again fourth on his list of pitches. Little number, it's going to be over the head of Harvey. One run will score, no play at first. So Will Venable scratching and clawing. And the Padres pick up a run here in the bottom of the fifth inning. As crazy as this is going to sound, as soon as he put that ball on the ground, job, is, he's done the job. Yep. The job is to drive in one of those runs. He's done the job because he's trying to do the right thing. Hey, sometimes the baseball gods let you get a base hit out of that. Off Harvey's glove, Turner can't make a play. And remember, he struck him out earlier on the changeup. That was a changeup there earlier in the count, just putting it in play, as you mentioned, Tony, getting on the board. So the longest active hitting streak in Major League Baseball continues. Venable now at 15 games. Here's Alexi Amarista. Snap throw over. And Venable back easily. Let's see if Harvey can hold the runner here at first. I showed you he's looking to run. Alexi Amarista. He has one hit. And I know you guys were talking about in the open. You're only going to get so many opportunities against a guy like Matt Harvey. And if you've got him on the ropes, it's a chance to chip away. You've got to make something happen. You've got him on the ropes here. And the hard thing for Amarista here is first and third, if you have your druthers, you know, you'd look for something in and try to hit the hole between first and second. But 
It's like I said, when guys in scoring position, he, he likes to turn it up a notch. That fastball goes from 93, 94 to yeah. 96, 97. And he's already shown you he isn't afraid to throw that breaking ball for a strike. Well, you, you guys mentioned opportunities, and this is a, a great opportunity for San Diego. And I don't like to get people bored with statistics, but that one statistic, the whip, mm -hmm. WHIP, walks, hits, and innings pitch, right? Well, what that means, folks, is it's an average of how many base runners an inning a pitcher allows out there on the average. Matt Harvey's is .96. So essentially what you're saying is, Fewer base runners than one. I know they can't do that, but fewer base runners than run than the average in nine in, in an inning. That ball hit very well to right center field. Everybody running, and Ligaris is able to make the play. Nice running catch. But the Padres will tie this thing at two. Amarista does the job. Puts a lot of real estate. Between himself and where that ball landed. So, Nick Hundley able to score easily. Tagging up, and we're not at a two. Thought the ball might find the gap. we a long way to come up with that. Rosenable was already around second base as the ball was caught and had to hustle back to first. But again, job done. Zach Fly ties the game. Yonder Alonzo. He goes to left field. Eric Young Jr. has been busy. And he makes the play to end things for the Padres in the bottom of the fifth, but San Diego ties it at two. And I just wanted to update you on the AT&T Twitter poll results. We asked the viewers earlier in the show, who is the best young pitcher in the game under the age of 25? And with 46%, Matt Harvey, the guy on the mound today for the Mets, is the winner. I know there were a lot of arms up there that you guys were impressed with. We saw Jose Fernandez earlier. He comes up with 33% of the votes. But Matt Harvey, the one that viewers are impressed with today, guys. I can't really argue with any of them. Uh, yeah, I can't either. Who's the fans the, are like those guys who are hyped. Yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. got the two World Series rings? Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Big game pitcher. That's Mungarder. Bird sat in Flores to face Stultz. Top of the sixth. Padres doing exactly what you talked about, gentlemen, at the top of the game. Making something happen when you have an opportunity against a guy as tough as Matt Harvey. So tied at two as the Padres put up their two spot in the bottom of the fifth. Not pretty the last last half minute, but very efficient. And we've gone from the first two games in the series really failing to execute and to doing a much better job last night. 
So you get your opportunity here today, executing, putting two runs on the board, getting back to even. National League West action today. Marlins beat the Giants six to five. Orioles beat the Rockies seven to two. And the Phillies beat the Dodgers three to two. Bouncing ball to shortstop. Amarista on the run. Bird got one down. Arizona at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, the next opponent for the Padres. They're tied at two in the 15th. In like, Pittsburgh. Nothing like a 15 inning game before you fly to the West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Chew up that bullpen, right? As the point. There we go. Timing's everything. Come in tired, boys. Well, Pittsburgh atop the National League Central. Action today, 72 and 50, two games ahead of the, the Cardinals. Reds right there in it, three and a half back. Get your tickets early. Should be a good series. Yeah, Pirates, yeah, they got some young, exciting players on that team. Kutchin. Pedro Alvarez. Pedro Alvarez. 30 home runs. You'll see Francisco Liriano, A.J. Burnett. Garrett Cole for the Pirates. Oh, Pedro, how about his year this year? Yeah. 13 and 5. He didn't get started until May, I think, too. He got 13 wins. You know, ERA, 268 for Liriano. This is a guy who showed a tremendous amount of talent in Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. I still think the Cardinals are going to win that division. Why do you say that? Just because. Seems like the Cardinals always have some type of magic. Dave Whitfield fan right there likes that call. Josh so, Sat, not so much. I know. Talked it over. Let the crew chief Jerry Davis know. And strikeout number five for Eric Stoltz. And with two outs, here's Wilmer Flores. You know, Tony, getting back to the Cardinals Pirates, just it's just something about that Cardinal team and what they bring and down the stretch, it seems like they always have that type of magic to. It's going to be a close race. Can't forget about the Reds in that division yep. either. I mean, both, all three of those teams, if it ended today, would make the playoffs. But I mean, we've been haggling for a couple of years. I think people are wanting to see the Pirates finish above 500 oh, yeah. in that streak. But I think this team is better than that. I think you know, they're going to be a postseason team, I think. You know, the pitching has been pretty solid for them. Well, last year, remember what happened because you traveled with us to Pittsburgh, yeah. and Pittsburgh looked like they were a, at least a lock to finish over 500. Yeah. And then the Padres beat them up a little bit; that they was, fell apart. That's when Chase Headley got hot. It was Pittsburgh. Well, Chase had some back into the season. Yeah, he did. Wow. Remember that series at the end there against the Brewers, Headley against Braun, for who would win the. RBI title. Chase Headley, crown. And Eric Stokes. Hey, former basketball player. Can jump a little bit. And that'll do it for the Mets in the top of the sixth. Eric Stokes, get up there. Jim Jerko will lead off for the Padres when we come back.
shoulder. From his cheek, and he began dealing early. He struck out five, including Chase Headley twice. But the Padres refused to go quietly. Pick up two runs in the bottom of the fifth. And that's where we are tied at two. Jed Jerko greets him here at the bottom of the sixth. Into the corner, Jerko will round first and hold up. And Jed has his first hit today. Well, he has, he's hit the ball solid all three times. That's a, that looked like a change up. By Jerko. Okay, does a nice job getting that ball in. So another opportunity here for Chase Headley. Harvey quickly ahead with a strike. Chase struck out in the second on a 97 mile an hour fastball and then struck out in the fourth on the curveball. And he'll fan this one to Quintanilla. Can't get a break. One down. Rolls one up. Happens to go right to the shortstop. How hard is it, Tony, after doing something like that to convince yourself to where, you know what, I can't change anything? Or do you continue to talk to yourself? It's, you, if you've gotten a hit, you know, somewhere in between, you you, you kind of admit that to yourself. But if you haven't, if you're making amps, and it's harder to convince yourself. Yeah. Kristen Orphea. He's 0 for 2 after putting together a string of four consecutive multi hit games. Six for 15 in the series. Got a question for you guys after this pitch. Why did Harvey go so late in the draft? <laughs> He's the seventh overall. Why, not, why did he go why, so late? Why is that late? Six other teams not want an arm like this, and the that, do, that's the way I look at it. He didn't know, have the arm like that when he got drafted, maybe. I know he was drafted once and didn't sign. Had a million dollar offer on the table, and he went to UNC. Here's the 0-2, and down goes the Norfia, second out of the inning. What year was that? 2010. His first season was 11 in April at St. Lucie. Let's see who was the first pick in 2010. Look up that draft. We're gonna have to look it up. A leadoff single by Jerko, and a lineout by Headley, and a strikeout by Denorfia. Here's Logan Forsythe. It's past Darno, and down to second will go Jerko. You know, judging that and looking at it live, I think that should be a pass ball. You know, I was going to say Darno has stopped pretty much everything, but this one it just looked like he just didn't get the glove down and gets Ryan. Ball and a strike to Forsyth. You're talking about Matt Harvey going seventh in the draft in 2010. Number one that year, Bryce Harper. Number three that year, Manny Machado. James Thalen, the uh, Pirates choice at number two that year, right handed pitcher. Drew Pomeranz. Trying to get some yeah. traction in the big league still Christian went ahead of him. Christian Cologne was four. He was a shortstop at Cal State Fullerton. 
Chris Sale down to number 13, huh, for the White Sox in that first round? Yeah, mm -hmm. Monty Grandal, Ritz. Well, we talked about it the last couple of days. It's an inexact science. Sure. It's, clearly, it's a big arm, but hard to argue with Harper at one and Machado at three. Two everyday players, yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Bouncing ball, Quintanilla up with it. And the Padres can't score in the bottom of the sixth, although Jerko had a leadoff single. We're tied at two. We head into the top of the seventh inning. Laura McKeeman here with Mark Sweeney. We're getting you ready for Padres Live, the postgame show coming up after the final out. And let's go back to the bottom of the fifth inning. Two men on. Padres able to make something happen. Yeah, they have to get on to their chances. And you look at Eric Stelt's fundamentals, laying the bunt down, helping himself out. And then you have Will Venable. I think that is the big key, getting a chop and extending his hitting streak. And then Alexi Amarista doing his job, sacrifice bunting. Few opportunities today, but they capitalized on those opportunities. Well, against Matt Harvey, you know the opportunities will be slim. We'll see if the Padres can go ahead and get some more offense going. And when we see you on the postgame show, we'll hear from Bud Black. And we also have a special feature about an amazing story from a military veteran. Guys, it's all coming up. Oh, we're going to look forward to it. Laura, thanks very much. So. Eric Stoltz here in the seventh will face Juan Lagares, Travis Dardo, and Omar Quintanilla. As we are knotted at two, and Stoltz quickly ahead, 0 oh and two. You know, I know we focused a lot today, uh, this afternoon, on Matt Harvey, but focus on this guy right here. Eric Stoltz is, is twirling a gem here, guys. He's only surrendered four hits, two runs. The 0-2 bounced to short, one down. And sometimes the soft tosser doesn't get enough love, you know what I'm saying? It's not glamorous. It's not it's hiked. Yeah. But he's twirling a gem. He's right there. And you see the pitch comparison. 89 on the fastball, 62 on the curveball for Eric Stoltz. Go back to what Tony Gwynn has said before about uh, comfortable 0 for 4s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guy's going back to the Mets dugout. They're shaking their head because he's dropping that 66 mile per hour curveball. Well, how about this little nugget from the angry statistician, Mike Trussell, always giving us good nuggets. Eight for Eric Stoltz, 8.02 counts this afternoon. Don't do what you said he need to do, right? Get ahead. In the strike zone. If you throw balls in the strike zone, these guys will swing the bats. And we thought it might be a good matchup for Eric. He's a young Mets team. Yep. Fairly inexperienced. There's one thing that Eric Stoltz doesn't do, and it's a positive. He doesn't overthrow. He knows his limitations. Right field. Norfia coming in. 
Two down. There, Eric today. Looking pretty darn sharp. And, and when you know you only throw 88, 89 at times, why try to throw harder? And I think that's the way Eric Stoltz has been pitching and thinking. Locating the fastball, feeling his position nicely. Good location of the changeup and also the first pitch curveball has been a big factor today as well, I think, for the veteran left-hander. Omar Quintanilla. So five strikeouts for Stultz. And a couple of walks, one of them a leadoff walk. Both walks coming in the same inning in the fifth. Mets didn't score anyway. So the walk's not hurting him. Eric has given up four hits. Two of them in the first resulted in a run. Two of them in the fourth. That's the second Mets run. That's paint. I was going to say that's that 87, 87 looks like 95. It just goes to show you, you don't have to throw 95 to be effective. You can hit that outside corner. He tried to hump up that one. You know, I like the lesson, too, that Eric Stoltz teaches young pitchers about just that. that you don't have to just throw a ball through a wall yep. to get people out. Change up. Lefty on lefty change up coming here. And the thing about it, you know, young pitchers think they have to throw, you know, 95 to get a look. Mm -hmm. To get teams to get be interested in them. And it's still about pitching. You still have to be able to pitch. If you can pitch and get people out. And I got to figure if you're a scout, it's a lot easier to make your case before the draft when you can say, how can you not take this guy? He throws 95 as opposed to, how can you not take these guy? this guy? He's a crafty right hander, tops out at 88. Yeah. But he knows how to pitch. Yeah. Sharply hit to right field and Quintanilla will motor around first. It'll get by DeNorfia in right. Quintanilla will stop at second base. That'll be scored a double. That one he just left up just a little bit too much. You know, if Chris fields this cleanly, who knows what happens at second base, but that's a double for Quintanilla. And Terry Collins thinks things over. And Andrew Brown will be the Mets pinch hitter. So Harvey's day is done. And with two outs. Andrew Brown, 260 hitter in 40 games. What's the advantage here? Guy who hasn't seen the pitcher or pitcher who hasn't really seen this hitter? I would say pitcher. I would say hitter. He's sitting there on the bench for six That's innings awesome. watching him. Watching him throw this, this you know, not overpowering stuff. You see, here is where I think the pitcher has the advantage now. 2 0. You got a guy who's been sitting on the bench for six innings. He's he's waiting for the first fastball you're going to throw. And here's why I think the pitcher has the advantage, Tony, going back to the, the first pitch, is because Eric Stoltz has that ability to go soft to where he doesn't have time. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a third or fourth time around in the lineup. It's coming up right here. Spotted fastball. <laughs> You're sitting on the bench for six innings and 87 is is the spotted fastball. Yeah. Well, Stoltz knows and Brown has bounced around between AAA and the big leagues this season. 
But I like that each of you has a different perspective on who has the advantage. And it's when you're down there in the heat of it. Is this one of those situations where if you're Eric Stultz, you just discount whatever this hitter offers and go with what's your best stuff? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Period. Yeah. Stick to your strengths. This is for a young hitter. It's hard to. It's hard to face a guy like Stoltz. Two one hit to center field. Back goes Venable, drifting, drifting off the wall, and Andrew Brown will win that matchup, and he will drive in Omar Quintanilla, and the Mets lead three to two. They left it elevated. Was that a changeup, Tony? It looked like a changeup. Turned it over a little bit. And when it's elevated like that, and on the outside part of the plate, he gets extended. Yeah, you can yeah. see the hand, the circle change grip on the baseball. And Good job of staying back yes. by Brown. Yes, he did. A two ball, one strike pitch. And Brown's able to do a little something with it. And the Mets have the lead as Buddy Black makes some adjustments. So Matt Harvey is out of this game. And Eric Stoltz is as well. Jeff Decker enters the game defensively. Back with more baseball from Petco in a moment. Series between the Mets and the Padres. The Mets picking up a run here in the top of the seventh inning. They now lead three to two. Eric Stoltz threw a nice ball game. Andrew Brown came off the bench for Terry Collins, pinch hitting with two outs, and drove in Omar Quintanilla. So Buddy Black has decided to make a change. Eric Stoltz goes six and two thirds, allows the six hits, and Nick Vincent is the new Padres pitcher. Nick twirled an inning last night. He walked one hitter and struck out a New York man a great job collectively by the pottery bullpen yesterday in that 8 2 victory sure was and Nick will face Eric Young Jr. with two outs Jeff Decker the new left fielder Logan Forsythe comes out of the ball game. Oh for two is Young. Has himself a walk in the fifth. A couple of pretty well pitched ball games by both Harvey and Stultz, but then the National League strategy takes over. Got to start pinch hitting, try to generate a little offense. 
I was kind of surprised by that. I thought, I don't know what Harvey's pitch count was. But. 86 pitches for Harvey. But you know, Terry Collins had said too before the game that it, as we talked about innings limits, yeah. he also mentioned that pitch count was a soft concern. You know, and he was going to try to manage both. And I, I'm sure that's a, like, that's a, it's a relatively new strategy, right, for managers having to worry about that. But he's got a couple of good young arms in Zach Wheeler and Matt Harvey, and that's been his approach. So Vincent gets Sarah Young Jr. to bounce to second base. For the third and final out of the seventh inning. But the Mets are able to pick up a run on two hits. And Nick Vincent does the job here. As the Padres get a chance to get a little offense going. We're going to stay here and join in with the singing of God Bless America. Please sing along as he presents God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountain. To the prairie, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. A triple by Justin Turner would get things going for the Mets. And then Marlon Byrd with an RBI double. Mets get off to a hot start. They lead one to nothing. Padres unable to score till the fifth as the Mets pick up another in the fourth. And the Padres would get there too. And it get very interesting. That second run looked like it might be more to come but the Padres get stuck there too they not this thing there and then the Mets in the top of the seventh inning pick up the lead pinch hit Andrew Brown with two outs he would drive in Omar Quintanilla and three to two is where we stand on this Sunday this will be it for the series with the Mets Mets took the first two games Padres took last night's game
eight to two the final. And today Scott Rice takes over for Matt Harvey. A great story Scott Rice we talked about him the other night when he came to the ball game on Friday twirled an inning plus a couple of hits gave up a run. Keeping the ball in the ball yard. Funky delivery. Deceptive. Here's Nick Hundley. Short armor. Down in the zone. Took a while to get to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. All those attributes. But I like your line, Mark. You're left handed, you have a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a shot. <laughs> no. So Eric Stoltz goes six and two thirds innings, six hits, three runs, couple of walks, five strikeouts. Staying right there with Matt Harvey and the Padres with a shot. Need a little bit more offense. Both teams with six hits. Well, with Rice here, you're going to have to get him to get the ball up because you see he's kind of kind of flunky in his delivery, kind of a kind of a short armor. Heavy sinker. You have to get that ball up a little bit. Nick Hundley figured it out. He's three for three today. But this lack of sleep he has is a good fodder. We need to stay up all night for a couple of weeks. Stay hot, Nick. He's got a short stroke working right now. He's taking his ball right back up the middle. Very nice. So you tried to pull that ball. That's a 6 3 play. Absolutely. And as a pitcher, you, you, you look at yourself and say, My goodness, I make a pretty decent pitch. Maybe elevated just a little bit, but that's one of those where you say, You know what? He did his job. He went with it very well. Here's Jeff Decker. Okay, that's what you have to do against a guy like Rice. You got to get him to elevate that ball a little bit so that you can get a good swing. Right. And this is going to be real hard for Jeff Decker here having a bunt against. A sinker ball in left hander. But it's the same premise. You want to get a ball that you can handle. Get a, a, a fastball up in the zone a little bit. Well, you're right. Looking at Rice's motion in it. That's a funky way yeah. he takes that hand out of the glove. Typically, you see that like drop and you want to get a good long arm motion. Or bring it up to your shoulder almost like a quarterback, but he's got in between. Flores will get Decker. That's perfect. And the 23 year old does his job. He'll move Nick Hundley over to second base. So you come in as you're a rookie and you've got to be able to execute the fundamentals, and he does. Well, we've talked about it here this whole series. Our execution the first two days was, was not good, but the last, the next two days have been outstanding. Well, you know the guys that put in the work. You know how frustrated they were in Cincinnati, in particular. And the coaching staff, as always, stays with them, supports them, keeps working, keeps working, and they execute right there. Here's Will Venable. 15 games now is his hitting streak. RBI base hit in the fifth. Remember that's when the Padres scored two to tie it. Mets one in the first, one in the fourth. They led two nothing. Bottom of the fifth, Padres tie it. And top of the seventh, the Mets take the lead. Well, Mark does a nice job keeping that ball in front. And we talked about it a bit last night. Darno, key piece of that trade with Toronto for Ari Dickey. And they've anticipated his arrival, but injuries have slowed him down. And he's here now for Terry Collins of the Mets. Padres one for four with runners in scoring position today. Tony, how many times did you look at the defense when you were in the batter's box as the pitcher was about to? Because you can see the outfield swing the other way. That indicates to me that. Probably Rice going to try to pound him away. 
plenty of times. You know, Tony, it's interesting comments I thought you'd made too in the open when we talked about Will now getting a chance to see more lefties. lefties yeah. And his numbers have improved. Yeah. But I think, it, you know, Buddy talked about it in our at the beginning of the game, seeing him take the ball the other way. That has been a big part, I think, of why those numbers have started to grow. He didn't just stand in there trying to pull everything. You know, sometimes he's taking that breaking ball, hitting it that way, taking a fastball, hitting it that way, line hitting the ball on a line. And, you know, in order to be an everyday player, you got to show them that you can handle both lefties and righties. Well, you see those numbers there, 300 against left-handers. Big opportunity here, ball and two strikes to Will. Yeah, but Rice gets the strikeout. Take a look at the sequence of pitches here to Will. Well, took four pitches from Rice. First pitch, slider. He's going down the way. We talked about the outfield, right? Going the other way, another slider. Slider, slider, slider. One and two, one and three. Save the fastball from last. Two seamer down and in. Uh, you know, for his part, that's how he makes his living. You yep. can't get out lefties. You're not going to work long. But you see what he did? He stayed out of the heart of the plate. Mm -hmm. So the left-handed specialist, Scott Rice, is done after getting Venable. Two outs. We're at the bottom of the seven. Padres trail by one. to two and they've made a pitching change as the Padres are threatening. Hey fans a reminder tomorrow when the Pirates come to town to begin their three game series here in San Diego we've got a very special broadcast for you our baseball language show put together by our producer extraordinaire Jason Lewis and staff the colorful vocabulary of baseball starts with Padres live the pregame show at 630 runs throughout the game and uh, the graphic that you think is just an animation in the back there. That's actually a poster that we're going to be giving away to fans. Head out here to Petco and enjoy a ball game. Learn a little bit about the colorful language that makes baseball so special. Gonzalez Hermen is the new Mets pitcher on his first major league save. A couple of games ago here against the Padres. And he'll face Jesus Guzman. Fastball slider change from the right hander. High 80s, low 90s. The last time he came in, he liked that change up an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Nick Hundley out there at second base. Let off with a single, his third hit of the game. Three for three is Nick. And Jeff Decker, nice job on the sacrifice bunt, pushed him to second. Will Venable struck out. 
And that's where we are. So Asus Guzman, a two out opportunity in the bottom of the seventh to tie this thing. Quickly ahead, no balls, two strikes. Guzman, eight for 39 as a pinch hitter, three pinch hit home runs. Wraps this ball to Quintanilla. Long throw. And her man comes in and does the job. He gets Guzman. Mets lead three to two. Guys, I'm lucky for a million reasons, no doubt. I get to work with you, chance to work with this great staff, but the group in the truck, Bill, Robbie put together some of these wonderful composites, slick video to watch their work all the time. They're the best. Unbelievable. Great job. Ronnie Cedeno is the new Padres shortstop. About time to do something down there. Justin Turner. And on the run is Will Venable. One down. You know, not only did those guys and everybody down that truck do a great job, but you know what I love? Hanging with them before games, just yucking it up, telling stories, having a good old time. And where Robbie Amavisca always picks up the tab everywhere we travel. What did that happen? Well, every time you're not there. <laughs> I don't know how you don't know that. Most generous guy I know. Here's Marlon Bird. Forget about old Chiron Bob. Don't forget about Chiron. Oh, yeah, he's the man. It's actually the name on his birth certificate. Wait, talk about foreshadowing. Yeah. We're going to have, gonna gonna have Chiron Bob glove night here at the ballpark. Everybody gets a pair of Chiron Bob gloves cut off at the fingers. <laughs> a la Oliver Twist. He does a lot of typing in a very cold truck to keep the hands warm. Ball and a strike. Bird out to center field. Back goes Venable. 
Drifting again to the track. To the wall. Goes up and makes the catch. Well bettable. Wow. Under complete control. Kept his eye on the ball. Tracked this one all the way up against the vinyl. Two down. When it left the bat, I thought, uh oh. See, Will knows exactly where he is. Reaches up and grabs it. Not sure if that ball would have got out or not. You know, the amazing thing on that play is that Will, he didn't even flash look. He could feel the track under his feet, right? Knows how much room he has to reach up and snatch it. Nice play. Josh Satin. He's one for three today. Had himself a single in the fourth inning. You know, Will made that look easy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Didn't it look effortless? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, he had a good read on that yeah. one. Yeah. Good jump. Knew where he was, like you said. Didn't feel for the wall. Put his glove up there early so that he could make the play. When you're going back on a ball, one of the things that outfielders sometimes forget to do is to get their glove up so they can make the play. A lot of times you see guys get close to the wall and their arms hit the wall and it impedes them from getting their glove up. But you saw he got his glove up early. Was able to make the play. Ball and two strikes here to Satin. Satin. A Berkeley grad. Go Bears. Tyson Ross. Mets lead by a run. Nick Vincent. On in relief. This ball is lifted to Decker and left. He goes to the track. So Vincent does the job. Three up, three down for the Mets. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Yonder Alonso is due to lead things off for San Diego. Baseball and it's brought to you by Petco, where the healthy pets go, and by your San Diego County Lexus dealer, inviting you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. On a lovely Sunday, a military Sunday, three to two, the Mets lead in the bottom of the eighth. Yonder Alonso and Jed Jerko, Chase Headley to face Gonzalez Hermen. Yonder one for three today. Matt Harvey, the starter for the Mets, he went six, didn't walk anybody, struck out six, allowed two runs. In came Scott Rice. 
And now her men. Luke Gregerson in the Padre pen. Mets scored a run in the first, one in the fourth, and another in the seventh. Padres did all their scoring, both runs in the fifth. The base runner. Yes, they do. Walk past it on to the next guy. Terry Collins knows his bullpen has been challenged. Their closer, Bobby Parnell, out. Neck injury. And Feliciano getting up for the, for the mitts. And Yonder Alonso earns a walk. Lead off the bottom of the eighth against her men. And it'll bring up Jed Jerko, who has one hit to show for it, but pretty good at bats, Tony. Yeah, yeah, he's hit the ball in but three times. Two balls to the left fielder and a base hit to left. One of the situations. I'm not looking for a bunt here. I think they're going to let Jerko yeah. swing the bat. I think so too. Take a shot, maybe hit the hole, hook something in the gap. Ooh, just missed. It. Yeah, just underneath that one. Eric Young Jr. had left. I was just going to say, gentlemen, that this series we've seen a heavy dose of sliders to Jed Jerko. That was a hanger if there was ever a hanger. Like you said, Tony, he just missed that. He's not happy with himself right now because he knows that that's what you're looking for in that situation. You're looking for one that's elevated in the middle of the plate, and he just got under. Chase Headley struck out in the second and third, lined out in the sixth. Well, you just know Jerko. Is like you had said before, going to be a good big league hitter. Already is a good hitter, but you watch him make those adjustments, and you see. And I think fans, all of us, have learned to appreciate the true grind on a young player, especially ups and downs. Yeah, he's learning. It's not an overnight thing, obviously. It's not, but you know what? Though it's it's it's. In those kind of situations, especially, you know, games on the line here, you know, it's it's learning to just trust your stroke, not try to do too much, not try to overswing. Just learning to trust the things that you work on every day. You see Gregerson in street there. And a Padre pen. San Diego got to turn something around here. Trailed by a run here in the bottom of the eighth. Ball and two strikes, one out to Chase Headley. There's that changeup you were talking about, Tony. But her man was throwing the other night. He's back at it this afternoon. We just got a piece of that. Yonder Alonzo over at first. Lead off walk. See if Chase can find a gap here. At the ready, if Buddy needs him. Yeah, just one extended inning. I'd love to see a home run, but you don't have to hit one. Base hit a two. Oh. 
Count even, two balls, two strikes. Alonzo bluffed like he was going to steal right there. Yonder has six stolen bases this season. If I'd have told you at this point in the year, he'd have more stolen bases than Alexi Amarista. Would you buy that? I would have lost that bet. Alexi has a couple. Ripped down the line and fair. Chase Headley didn't find the gap. He found the chalk instead. The result's the same. A double and Alonzo will hold up at third. So Chase Headley able to spin on a Herman offering, drives it down the line. It looked like a chain came back with the changeup and it's over Satin's head down the line. Bird does a nice job playing the ricochet. And Alonzo's he's coming around third. You see Hoffman holding him up. And again, we talked about this all day today. We talked about this the whole series. Second and third, infield's back, they're giving up the run. Yep. You succeed by hitting the ground ball to second, ground ball to short. Elevate something in a fly ball deep enough in the outfield to get the run home. The objective is to get the runner on third home. Well, you gotta like the Padres' chances oh, here I with do. Chris I, Denorfia. You got Denorfia at the plate, and a lot of times when you're doing it, when you're trying to get something done, you're trying to do the right thing, sometimes. You, you get the bonus. Sometimes when you're trying to do the right thing, you get the base hit or you, know, you drive into it. Well, the wheels are turning for Buddy Black. He's got Mark Kotze waiting on deck. These at bats take a little bit of discipline here. You've got to trust what you do. Of course, Ramon's trying to get you to chase something out of his own. He wants you to swing at that changeup. He wants you to overswing and try to do too much. Second. So you got to be aware here. Two first bases open. Ramon's not just going to give in. He is not just going to lay a fastball in there. So we've seen that already here. This a bat. A two to one count. Not not giving in. Two two slow bouncer kicked it in. Not going to get him. Nope, and that'll do the job. Just like you called, Tony. Just a little grounder to do a little something. And Yonder Alonzo, who led off the inning with a walk, scores the game tying run in the bottom of the eighth. Isn't that amazing how that works? It's unbelievable. Let's go back to the first pitch. It was a battle. He went on the slider. Slider again. He lays off it, recognizing out of the hand. There's the fastball in, kind of straightened him up a little bit. Fourth pitch, slider to the dirt. Now he's got a really battle. I'm looking like a flat slider. He went out and got it. Just a little game of pepper, Tony, to the left side. Run in. Save it first. Still only one out. The thing I like about it is that he threw him five pitches there. I don't believe any of them were strikes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And a lot of times in that situation, that's what's going to happen. So... But that doesn't mean that you still can't succeed. And that's what he did. He hit the ground ball and he tied it up. It just got interesting. We're tied at three, bottom of the eighth.
The eighth, and as a reminder, be at Petco Park Sunday, August 25th for U.S. Air Force Appreciation Day, presented by USAA. Enjoy a special pregame ceremony honoring the men and women who serve in the United States Air Force for the Padres' take on the Cubs. First pitch is at 110. Get your tickets today at Padres.com or get on the horn at 619-795-5555. So Pedro Feliciano is the new Mets pitcher as Kristen Orfia does the job infield single drives in yonder Alonzo Ike Davis the new Mets first baseman and for Josh Satin. Chase Headley at second and Mark Kotze is the Padres hitter. This is probably going to be Feliciano's only hit. And I would normally not say this in this situation, first and second, nobody out, but Flores is way back at third. I mean, way back. And if Mark decided he wanted to drop a butt down the third baseline. Look how far back he is. Not saying, just saying. Just It's there if you want it. That's... Tapper to third. And Mark Kotze has a second out here in the bottom of the eighth. Now, if you want to leave Feliciano in the game and make it intentionally walk Huntley here and go after Jeff Decker. Well, you might want to. He's five for seven. Since being sleepless in San Diego. Looks like Darnell is given the uh, right hand turn signal, huh? Or got the hand extended. Jeff Decker hitting in the ninth spot. A nice opportunity, though, for the rookie. Yep. Right, three three ball game, bottom of the eighth. And the biggest thing is, is like we were talking about when Quintanilla was hitting against Stoltz. It's not going to be overpowered. He's just got to he's got to stand in there and let it get to you. It's not a free pass. Loads the bases for the Padres. Two walks in the inning. Chase Headley over at third now. Kristen Orphy at second. And Nick Hundley at first. Here's Jeff Decker. Just kind of floated in there. Good sacrifice punt. His first and only time up. Padres have scored their three runs. One taking advantage of a hit by pitch, another a walk. Get a couple freebies. Making the Mets pay. Ball two strikes. Nice to see the Padres try to finish what they've started here at the bottom of the eighth. Lonzo walked to lead things off. Jerko flied out. Chase Headley double made it second and third. Kristen Orphia, the infield single. Scored Alonzo, tied it at three. Here, if you're Decker, 
And it's something. It's not, it's not going to be a fast ball, I don't think. It's going to be something off speed. One of those frisbees down and away. Oh! He's mad at himself because he could have worn that. Yeah. And they got in the lead. That's just natural reaction that's right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't help but got to try to get out of the way. But I guarantee you, as soon as that ball missed, he thought, wow, I could have worn that. We could have taken the lead. I think we'll have a conversation with Carlos Quentin after this one. <laughs> I don't know how it's done. to the offense here. Runners are going. Got to throw a strike. Full count, two outs. Lifted to center. Ligaris. And it'll do it for the Padres in the whole half of the eighth. But we go to the top of the night, tied at three. the ninth and we're knotted at three there's a sequence here to Jeff Decker all breaking balls going away from him one two right there tries to get him to chase two two that's the one I'm sure he's thinking I should have just taken that one it's hard to just stand in there and get hit by a pitch but your natural reaction is to get out of the way. And Tony, and I know it's easier said than done, but here's what enters my mind when I see that sequence. That that pitch there by Felicia was a mistake because he wanted it, you know, down and away. Now, as a hitter, how tough is it? And if this goes back to you saying trusting your stuff, whatever, and trusting, knowing what the pitcher's throwing. Is that a case where, as a hitter, you, you, you cut the plate in half and look middle away mm -hmm. because of Felicia? The, 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 the arm angle, the frisbee, yep. and. Where he tries, and if yep. you, if you look out there, you dive and you get hit. You get hit again when you when you. Once again, what, easier said than done. When a left-hand hitter is coming in to face a left-handed pitcher, the first question I always would ask is, "Can he come in?" Okay, I don't think Feliciano wants to come in, right. so I'm eliminating the inner half and saying, "Hey, I'm I'm shooting this ball to left field because everything's going to be going away from me." Mm -hmm. And so on a pitch like that, that two-two pitch, yeah, you probably would have worn it right. because. You're diving out over the plate. Sure. Wilmer Flores, Juan Lagares, and Travis Dardot to face Houston Street here at the top of the night. And Houston ahead, no balls, one strike. Mets have their three runs on six hits. Padres, their three on nine hits. As you check out the good news in the Little League World Series, Chula Vista, Eastlake, 15. Wow. Three over Newark. Tijuana winning today. Mm -hmm. Congratulations could, to both teams. That's a shellacking. Be, both teams swinging them. Swinging the bats. Could it be a 
East Lake Tijuana World Championship. Uh, that'd championship. be something, wouldn't it? Be awesome because then you could bring both teams out here and honor both of them. Again, that event is just so much fun. They put the kids in the dorm on the you know on the campus, kind of on where the little league fields are, and they all all the countries live together in the dorms. Oh, it's unbelievable! I think they're gonna have to start pushing the fences back there. I, I'm agreeing with you. I, 200 all the way around. I think these kids, if you saw at today's games, bigger and stronger. Yeah, they're big, just like the big league game. They're leaving opposite stronger. field with seemingly little effort. No, no problem at all. You know, talking to Terry Collins before the game, and I've been checking out their lineup again and seeing Wilmer Flores in his 10th game as a big leaguer. And Terry was saying, and I just, I knew I was going to have a young team. I knew I was going to see some fresh faces, but I never thought I'd be at this point in the season and see this many guys I expected to be in maybe double, triple A. So Street gets Flores in the top of the night. Deep count here, and he goes to the slider. That's uh, right down the heart of the plate, but it's got a little tilt to it. Well, it looks like uh, Flores kind of. Yeah, it looked like he kind of hurt his hurt himself. Yeah. Juan Lagares. Oh for three reached on an error in the second. Oh, and Houston Street is pitching the way he's been pitching. Yes, this late, latest stretch. It is impressive to watch the way he can locate. Repetition. That's what he used to talk about in spring training this year. We had a little chat. Same arm action, same arm slots, same delivery over and over and over again. You've said it before. I found it interesting. You throw a strike when you want to. That's a big league, right? But you throw a ball when you want to. Sure. You need to do, learn how to do that as well. well you watch him just off the plate. Think of closers with overpowering stuff, and then a guy like Houston. Just an artist. Fly ball. Denorfia. Two down. Hey guys, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent. Of the San Diego Padres. <laughs> no day at the beach. That's awesome. Padres better work for everything they've gotten today. Battle in the Mets and their ace, Matt Harvey. Eric Stoltz doing a nice job today. Down 2 nothing with the Padres into the fifth. Put up a two spot in the bottom of the inning. Tied it. Mid score again. Taking the lead in the seventh. Padres bottom of the eighth. Tied it. Yeah, did look good for a while there. And he came back, scratched for two, and then the Mets took the lead. And looked like Harvey was uh, you know, going to come out of the game and possibly get the win. But they scratched the run there to get even. See, there's a, there's one of those pitches you're talking about, Mike. Purposely for a ball off the plate, just enough to where the guy might fish for it, might bite at it. A young hitter like Travis Darno, only a second major league game. Yeah. You think he's ever seen a guy like Houston Street?
you know when you're throwing a bullpen right you're concentrating to hit your spots spin some curveballs throw some changeups okay give me five curveballs in the dirt bounce it on the plate with purpose two strikes trust your catcher give me five of those See, it took a while as a hitter to realize that's what pitchers were doing two and two And Dardo lays off. And the count goes full. I'd like to welcome ZZ Top enjoying the game. <laughs> Our share of celebrities here in town. A two out walk to Dardo. Atypical of Houston Street. It'll bring up the shortstop, Omar Quintanilla. Padres have only walked three hitters today. Darno has two of them. He walked twice yesterday in his major I was league say, debut. He, he, he's shown some patience at the plate. He really hadn't chased a whole lot of stuff out of his own. Quintanilla has a double and a run scored. A strikeout and a ground out today. Foul straight back and Ike Davis waits on deck. Should Street be unable to get Quintanilla here. See Davis. Not a lot of options for the Mets. Their their pop was David Wright. Out for the foreseeable future with a right hamstring injury. Bouncer, second base. Zirko. So Street comes in, does the job. We're tied at three as we head to the bottom of the ninth. And Will Venable will lead things off. Score going in the top of the first inning. Marlon Byrd, an RBI double. That would score Justin Turner. And then in the fourth inning, they pick up another run. Byrd would score there. Padres would answer, picking up two in the fifth. Lexi Amarista, sacrifice fly. Foresight that Hudley would score in that inning, and then the Mets would pick one up in the seventh. Andrew Brown with the double, and then Kristen Orpia, the infield chopper, and the infield hit. 
would score Yonder Alonso tied at three. Nick Hundley, three hits today. As we get to the bottom of the ninth inning, it's Will Venable to face Pedro Feliciano. Again, he's going to just eliminate the inside ball. He's not coming in. He's going to go away. So how he gets it away is going to change. It might be a breaking ball. It might be a fastball away. He might turn it over. Away. He's had a good series here. Get on base. 83 mile an hour fastball from down under, low three quarter. Yeah, it seems like Feliciano Tony, anything in, middle in is a mistake. Yep. How about you, Will Venable? Come on. Plenty deep. Plenty gone. Ball game. in a dramatic bottom of the ninth, a walk-off home run, and the Padres will split the series with the Mets, dropping the first two, taking the last two. The offense today, Nick Hundley, Will Venable, and contributions all the way around, backing a strong outing, Eric Stoltz, Nick Vincent, Houston Street. Hashtag walk off. Yeah, as dramatic as you could possibly hope for for Will Venable. That was the right man, right spot. Yep. Guys swinging the hottest bat in the lineup. And Will Venable is with our Kelly Crow. Kelly. Thanks a lot, guys. Wow, what a way to finish it there. Will, this is the second time I've been standing up here with you in a walk off situation, but that has to feel pretty great. Yeah, you know, that guy's, that guy's tough. It was. Uh... Nice job. Well, tell me about that one-two pitch. What did you see right there? Uh, that guy's tough on lefties. Um, you know, just threw a slider over the plate, and uh, lucky that ball didn't hook and got out of here. Will, can you put into words what this last couple months have been like for you, just hitting so well right now? Uh, you know, just the hard work's paying off a little bit. Um, like it to translate to some more wins for us. But, uh, you know, it's been all right. We're just trying to keep it going. And lastly, just the way this game was going, what impressed you the most with the way your teammates were able to scratch up some wins, especially there at some runs in the fifth inning? Yeah, we had, we really had to, to scratch and claw for this one. Uh, Harvey's a, a tough assignment. Did a good job. Stoltz, Stoltz went with him pitch for pitch and uh, kept us in the ball game. We were able to squeak a couple through. Well, congratulations. Well, enjoy this one. All right, thank you. There you go, guys. Will Venable, his second walk-off of the season, and I missed the Gatorade that time. Well done. Well played. <laughs> You're nimble. You're cat-like. 
Let's check out what's coming up on the post-game show with Laura McKeeman. Laura. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. And, of course, we will have.